I thought I'd make a quick video on the chemistry behind the wax jacket, such as the barber jacket, which is made just five miles up the road from me here in Sunderland at a place called South Shields. A barber have been making wax cotton jackets for quite a long time now, since 1894, and use a tried and tested method, very, very effective method, where they take wax molecules so we've got the, their own wax in this tin here, you can just see it on the lid there. And they apply the wax once it's heated and melted to the cotton fabric and that actually gives it a waterproofing element. So before we go into the chemistry involved, just want to run through some typical properties of wax molecules. So first one there, they typically melt at temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius. They are insoluble in water, but they are soluble in organic solvents. And wax molecules can be synthetic and natural. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to use beeswax as my example of a wax molecule. Now beeswax is obviously a natural wax molecule. And on the board there, I've drawn two identical um, wax molecules that would be like the ones found in beeswax. So you can see hopefully the functional group in the molecule there. These are actually esters and they are esters of very very long carboxylic acids and even longer alcohols. So why would something like beeswax melt at a temperature above 45 degrees C? Well, it's all down to the strength of the intermolecular forces that exist between the wax molecules. So if I just represent these with some red dotted lines here. So we've got quite strong intermolecular forces and that's because these molecules are so large. We've got lots of atoms in the wax molecule and therefore lots of electrons. And so the intermolecular forces, which would be van der Waals forces or London forces in this case, would be quite strong and therefore quite a, a reasonable temperature will be required to overcome these intermolecular forces here. And so typically we'd need temperatures in excess of 45 degrees C to do that. So if we turn now to the property that makes wax molecules excellent for waterproofing garments, the fact that they are insoluble in water. So I've drawn up there just the same wax molecule again, but I've just got one there now. And the main thing to point out is that the wax molecule is non-polar. So in other words, what we mean by that is that it has no charges or slight charges on it. So if we introduce a water molecule now, so you can see I've drawn an H2O molecule up here, you can see that I've drawn these slight charges, these delta plus charges on the hydrogens and the delta minus on the oxygen. And so that makes the water molecule polar. Remember the wax molecule is non-polar. So in very simple terms, the water molecule being polar cannot interact with the wax molecule, which is non-polar. And so if this molecule is impregnated in your cotton jacket and it rains, water molecules are landing on your coat and they can't interact with each other. In other words, the water molecules would just slide off. I just thought I'd finish the video by waxing the pocket, the part of the pocket where the badge is, and then we'll put some water on just to show you how effective the wax is at keeping the water out. So you can see I've put some wax on the badge part of the pocket, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sprinkle some water onto the jacket itself just to try and mimic the action of rain. And hopefully you'll be able to see that the water is literally just sitting on top 
of the, the wax. So it's not penetrating the cotton at all, it's just sitting on the surface and obviously keeping the person dry underneath.